there is a big concern that automation, especially powerful AI, will get rid of jobs. The people will lose jobs. And as you were saying, the senses throughout history of the 20th century, automation did not do that ultimately. And so the question is, will this time be different? Right. That is the question. Will will this time be different? And it really has to do with how quickly we can merge with this type of intelligence. Uh, whether Lambda or GPT-3 is out there, and maybe it's overcome some of its you know, key problems, uh, and we really have an enhanced human intelligence, that might be a negative scenario. Um, but I mean, that's... That's why we create technologies to enhance ourselves. Uh, and I believe we will be enhanced. We're not just going to sit here with uh, 300 million uh, modules in our neocortex. We're going to be able to go beyond that. Um, because that's useful, but we can multiply that by 10, 100, 1,000 a million, um, and you might think, well, what's the point of doing that? It's like asking somebody that's never heard music, well, what, what's the value of music? I mean, you can't appreciate it until you've created it. There's some worry that there'll be a wealth disparity, you know, a class or wealth disparity. Only the rich people will be Basically, the rich people will first have access to this kind of thing, and then because of this kind of thing, because the ability to merge will get richer exponentially yeah. faster. And I say that's just like cell phones. I mean, there's like four billion cell phones in the world today. In fact, when cell phones first came out, you had to be fairly wealthy. They weren't very inexpensive. So you had to have some wealth in order to afford them. Yeah, there were these big, sexy uh, and, phones. And they didn't work very well. They did yeah. almost nothing. So you can only afford these things if you're wealthy at a point where they really don't work very well. <laughs> so, um, so achieving scale is and uh, making it inexpensive is part of making the thing work well. Exactly. So these are not totally cheap, but they're pretty pretty cheap. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can get them for a few hundred dollars. Especially given the kind of things it provides for you. There's a lot of people in the third world that have very little, but they have a smartphone. Yeah, absolutely. And the same would be true with AI. I mean, I see homeless people have their own cell phones. and Yeah, so your sense is any kind of advanced technology will take the same trajectory. Right, it ultimately becomes cheap and will be affordable. Uh, I probably would not be the first person to put uh, something in my brain to connect to computers, because um, I think it will have limitations. But once it's really perfected, and at that point it'll be pretty inexpensive, I think it'll be pretty affordable. So in, in, in which other ways as you outline your book, is life getting better? Because I, I think... Well, I have, I mean, I have 50 charts in there <laughs> Yeah, where everything is getting better. I think there's a kind of cynicism about, uh, like if, even if we look at extreme poverty, for example. For example, this is actually a poll taken on extreme poverty. And the people were asked, has poverty gotten better or worse? And the options are increased by 50%, increased by 25%, remain the same, decreased by 25%, decreased by 50%. If you're watching this or listening to this, try to, to try to vote for yourself. 70% thought it had gotten worse. And, the, and that's the general impression. 88% thought it had gotten worse or it remained the same. Only 1% thought it decreased by 50%. And that is the answer. It actually decreased by 50%. So only 1% of people got the right optimistic estimate of how uh, poverty is. Right, and, and and this is the reality. And it's true of almost everything you look at. You don't want to go back 100 years or 50 years. Things were quite 
miserable then, but we tend not to remember that. So literacy rate increasing over the past few centuries across all the different nations, nearly to 100% across many of the nations in the world. It's gone way up. Average years of education have gone way up. Life expectancy is also increasing. Life expectancy was 48 in 1900. And it's over 80 now. And it's going to continue to go up, particularly as we get into more advanced stages of simulated biology. For life expectancy, these trends are the same for at birth, age one, age five, age 10. So it's not just the infant mortality. And I have 50 more graphs in the book <laughs> about all kinds of things. Uh, even spread of democracy, which might bring up some sort of controversial issues, it, it still has gone way up. Well, that one is, uh, it's gone way up, but that one is a bumpy road, right? Exactly. And some, Somebody might represent democracy and and go backwards, but we basically had no democracies before the creation of the United States, which was a little over two centuries ago, which in the scale of human history isn't that long. 